I'd like to start by describing uh, what high-definition endoscopy is, and it's really a combination of four things. Firstly, you need a chip with lots of pixels, um, and the earlier chips are about three, 400,000 pixels, and now we have uh, megapixel-sized chips. These are the little charge-couple devices in the end of the scope that um, uh, are light-sensitive. You need proper cables, you need a a clever processor, and you need an HD screen. My daughter told me that P stands for progressive. She's four. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there's something called interlace, which she said isn't as good. So we, if you look for a P, then, uh, or ask your daughter or son, uh, they should be able to explain to you exactly what it is. So as we evolve, hopefully our detection of pathology will improve and our in vivo characterization of pathology will improve. So I was going to use Barrett's in the 20 minutes I have as an example um, to describe some of the features that we should be looking for. So there are a couple of questions. The first is whether we can identify specialized intestinal metaplasia at present with current technology, how accurately we can pr predict dysplasia, um, and uh, whether we can detect dysplasia in the first place. This is finally, whether we can do away with random biopsies and just suffice with targeted biopsies. So although it's white light, I don't just use white light in my practice. I will gloss upon a little bit of chromo and a little bit of electronic um, endoscopy. Um, Gilrud uh, first described a classification system for intestinal metaplasia. Uh, just over 10 years ago. And he used acetic acid. He used standard definition endoscopy at the time. It's always available, but he used magnification endoscopy as well. Now, acetic acid is a fatty acid. Um, it's been used in colposcopy for 15, 20 years. It's also a mucolytic agent. But it, it turns the surface mucosa white by denaturing um, the cellular proteins. And this, these were the sensitivities he came up with, with four different characteristics. Round pits, reticular oval pits, fine villus, and rigid. Now, the round pits are very typical of fundic. The reticular oval pits are very typical of the cardia. And the villus and ridged type pits are more typical of intestinal metaplasia. So can you tell which is which? Which is that one? They're round. So they're, car they're fundic. These are little round circles with a dot in the middle, which are more likely to be cardia or mixed cardia fundic. This is fine villus. Looks a little bit like a brain. And this is thick villus, a thick brain, if you will. Um, and um, there have been a few studies looking at the um, sensitivity of this classification system. Um, I just want to bring your attention to the positive predictive values which are around 90%, which isn't bad. Um, and here, both systems used um, high-resolution endoscopy at the time with magnification and MBI. So the answer is we're getting better at predicting intestinal metaplasia, providing we have the right tools, MBI, magnification, endoscopy. Um, but can we predict high-grade dysplasia? Um, and there have been various um, attempts at classifying what we look for. And they all pretty much come to the same conclusion. There's small variations, but the things to look for are irregularity in the pit pattern, enhanced or irregular blood vessels, um, and distortion. So really two things, distorted pit pattern and abnormal distorted vessels. And if you just have a look at the sensitivities of these studies... Now, they all used optical magnification, and they all used MBI. They were all centers uh, where the um, referral rate was, the referrals were for high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. So there'll be a lot of selection bias with these studies. But essentially, the sensitivities were about between 95 and 100%. So if the conditions are right, you've got a group of patients who have high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia, or a lot of them. You have experts and you have 
uh, magnification endoscopy. These are the kind of results you'll come out with if you are looking for high-grade neoplasia. All these studies use still images rather than videos. If you use videos, the results are less good. Your sensitivities go down to between 75 and 80 percent. Again, these are using magnification endoscopy and MBI. So what happens if you have a look at all the studies? Sensitivities are superb, but again, uh, there's selection bias because half of your patients have got high grade or more, and you've got operator bias because they're all experts. So where does this leave us? So in the right conditions, we may be able to detect it, uh, but that doesn't include many of us. So can we detect what's the detection rate for neoplasia in Barrett's using these, these systems? The best trial to date was a multi-center trial um, published by Curvis, uh, looking at trimodal imaging, which is a combination of autofluorescence um, and magnification with MBI. And they used double-blind, um, ran sorry, random crossover study with targeted biopsies and random biopsies. Um, the beauty of this study um, is that each patient will act as their own control, so you reduce bias to some degree, but there is still bias because you've still got a medium risk population, so half of the patient, or a large proportion of the patients still had high grade, so all had to have confirmed low grade, um, and so it's still open to the same biases, selection bias uh, and uh, operator bias. But this design should be how all um, studies uh, should be conducted from now on if you're looking for um, tangible outcomes. But if you combined target biopsies and random biopsies, there is no um, uh, overall benefit of ETMI over white light endoscopy. Um, although uh, the detection rate with AFI was high, um, uh, and the sensitivity or the, um, the specificity was improved if you added MBI in. Uh, very briefly, as a study from a couple of months ago um, by um, Sharma, again, it was a crossover study. And again, he was looking at white light with random biopsies versus white light MBI and targets, by note, but not random. In fact, although this is open to bias, the detection of high-grade neoplasia is higher in the MBI group. So what does this leave us with? Um, Pradeep is gone. Who came up with that name? I mean, it could have been Adbas or Basad, but Badass. Uh, come on. So the Badass study stands for Barrett's dysplasia detection with acetic acid spray. Now, that's left me pretty knackered, but there we go. Anyway, uh, two groups, uh, surveillance and high risk. Um, and uh, three characteristics you are looking for to identify high-grade neoplasia, the surface pattern, the vascular pattern, and the acetic white whitening. So this was to look at the effect of acetic acid. Uh, and if you went to a Pradeep's last talk, he presented some of the data to date, of which his last two studies are the largest. Um, but a um, uh, single endoscopist, uh, a superb study, superb outcomes, and good study, but single endoscopist. Um, uh, but results were very good. Um, so the definition of, uh, or, or the characteristics of high-grade neoplasia were irregular pit pattern, loss of pit pattern, um, enhanced uh, or irregular vascular pattern, and focal early dis disappearance of aceto whitening. I'll show you that in a little while. But these are results. I'd like you to look at the neoplasia, additional neoplasia yield uh, with acetic acid. As you can see, 43 in the white light group alone to 102, which is a 2.6-fold improvement, which is stunning. Um, however, uh, it's all very good, but if you look at the two groups here, the high-risk group, you've got a sensitivity of 99%, but the surveillance group, uh, where the prevalence is only 17%, your sensitivity drops quite dramatically. So can you extrapolate these outcomes to surveillance groups at the moment. Point for discussion. Uh, now this is a uh, poll study from uh, Wiesbaden. Uh, similar outcomes, but again, you've got a high risk group. 406 were high, group, high risk, 295 were low, low, uh, were low, low risk. 
Um, sensitivities were similar, 96, with a specificity of 6% for detection of high-grade intranepithelial neoplasia. Um, and um, in, the, um, uh, in the white light group, there is no high-grade intranepithelial uh, no neoplasia found, so you can more or less exclude these results. Um, but again, encouraging. So what should we do now? Can we detect neoplasia uh, with the technology we have at the moment? Um, and the answer is probably providing we have the right conditions, providing we have a high-risk population, providing we have experts and providing we have the right equipment. Um, can we predict histology? The same applies. And do we still need random biopsies? I think unless all of those preconditions apply, I think we definitely do. So my practice, what do I do? Um, we'll use your best endoscope. Um, so put that aside. Allow yourself time. Try and get rid of all the inflammation because inflammation really does mask any disease, it will increase the number of targeted barps as you do, and I find it very hard to tell the difference between neoplasia and inflammation. Photograph all your targets in case you can need to come back. Um, wash the esophagus, um, and we use uh, simethicone and often NAC now. Um, you can, uh, in Japan, the, the patients are given mucolytics and proteolytics, they're very expensive here, but you could give your patients NAC and simethicone to swallow, but it tastes foul. Um, but always finish off with random biopsies, and don't forget to retroflex to review the cardio. I'll show you a little picture of that a little bit later on. So my experience of Pentax is there are um, three ways in which you can change the image. First is by enhancing the surface. This is all post-image processing, so you, you lose very little light. Um, one of the problems I found with MBI is if you use it to detect, you lose a lot of light and it makes it quite hard. Uh, you can use contrast enhancement to improve the surface pattern even more and tone enhancement to enhance the vascular pattern. A couple of bracket points again. I've talked about cleaning mucosa and using n uh, and also try to sequentially inspect the segments. So start at the bottom and slowly work up. And don't forget to retroflex. So my practice is to use iScan 1 and then target biopsy. I put on iScan 2 and 3 and then retarget biopsy. And then I use acetic acid. I use 2.5%, uh, it's a typo, uh, and then use iScan again. And the whole thing takes about 15 minutes. Uh, what do I use? I simply use this classification system. It's very simple. If the ret pits are round or reticular, then it's likely to be cardiac or fundic. If it's a villus or ridge pattern, then it's more likely to be SIM, if you're a little bit confused as to whether there's Barrett's there or not. Still, it's not perfect. For dysplasia, again, you look for irregular mucosal pattern and delayed whitening of the acetic acid. And with the vascular pattern, you need to look for enhanced vasculature and uh, irregular vasculature. So a couple of videos, um, and then we're done. So this is acetic acid spray. Uh, so you start off. Uh, Forget about these lesions. Uh, just look at the rest of the mucosa. So this is just with eye scan one. So you can already start to see in the mucosal pattern emerging, but it's still not entirely clear. But you can often see even with this setting abnormalities. If you put on eye scan two, it becomes a little bit more clear, and you can already start to see the mucosal pit pattern. Here it all looks relatively normal. Uh, in this typical of first specialized to start to place. You've got that ridge for this pattern. This is acetic acid, very simple to apply, takes a few seconds, and immediately you get the whitening. This was 2.5%, and the pit pattern becomes immediately more enhanced. Very, very easy to do, as you can see. I've just become a convert. Um, so, there are no abnormalities there, and then if you start to use eye scan, it becomes even more prominent. And the important thing with eye scan, you don't lose light. Uh, and the pictures are sensational. And it's very easy to see any minor regularity or change of vasculature. And this is iScan 3 using tone, contrast, and uh, surface enhancement. So, a couple more examples.
Again, this is not using acetic acid. Can anyone see the lesion? Does anyone want to go? Which that? <coughs> that? 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 Well done. So there's your, there's your early cancer. So although this is slightly nodular, this is the top of the gastric fold, and you can see the normal villus architecture of specialised intestinal metaplasia. Here's another one. Okay, so you're not allowed to answer all your questions. Uh, again, you can answer this one if you want. Can anyone spot the neoplasia? Slightly harder to see with your movement. But just here, you can see there's slight vascular enhancement, there's slight irregularity, it's slightly harder to appreciate. It's far more subtle than many, other, many of the other lesions. Uh, and then this is another example of acetic acid spray, but with a subtle lesion. So it's just been sprayed with acetic acid. Um, can anyone see the emerging abnormality? There's again, there it is. You see, so you've got loss of vascular pattern and there's no aceto white. Uh, with white light alone, that's actually very hard to see. Finally, don't forget to reference that because it's very difficult to see these lesions without retroflexion. Uh, so this is slightly raised and it's got the adherent mucus, which is always a telltale sign, but it's slightly redder, it's distorted, and the vascular pattern slightly more enhanced. Oh, oh there's another one. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, no. Um, so here, we've got standard white light. And you can start to see there's a little bit of nodularity here, not particularly clear. You use a little bit of eye scan. And it becomes far more important. You can see the vascular enhancement, the elite irregularity here, but look there, there's another lesion. It becomes far more prominent. And this is just, this is a post-ablation patient, and this is just at the esophagastric junction after ablation. So here we had to reablate the margin. Can anyone see this lesion? It's not difficult. And this one? Can anyone, can anyone shout out when you can see? Yes. You can answer all the money. 11 o'clock, there you go. Also, another lesion? Oh my god, yeah. Did you say another one? <laughs> another? Oh, yeah, so you can get lots and lots of lesions. Uh, and so this guy, uh, had a fairly multifocal diffuse um, uh, in neoplasia. I'm going to finish now. I'm not going to talk about colons because I think, um, uh, Ralph, you're going to mention colonoscopy. So I'll just flip to my summary. Um, so the optical techniques for defining mucosal abnormalities are improving every year. Um, as you can see from those video samples, um, uh, with technology that's available today, uh, it's very easy to see, pit, to see the pit pattern. It's not actually that hard um, to try and describe it and at least have a stab. But the key is to look for the targeted areas because you know you'll improve your yield. And that should be the take-home message. Do as many targets as you need to and then follow that with random biopsies. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we can do away with random biopsies yet, simply because, as I've described before, the conditions aren't right. At the moment, all the data simply suggests that it's fine if you're in a, high, if you're in a tertiary referral center with modern equipment and you're used to seeing lots of neoplasia, so your pattern recognition uh, for spotting it um, is finely tuned. Um, in my view, acetic acid certainly enhances performance, um, and uh, Pradeep, thanks for introducing me to that. Um, and I'll leave that for Ralph, uh, who will talk about virtual disease.